I'm just now learning about the whole cicada thing, and uh, I actually talked to a few people about it. They were talking about eating them. A spot where I actually almost dumped because it was a little rough on one side. I, I chose the wrong path, and it was a little rough. So as you strip them, they kind of, it looked, the action was awesome, man. I was like, oh, this guy's a genius. I just felt something a little tight, and I said, well, I'm going to wait. And then I started seeing the grass move right where my fly was. So I set the hook, strip set. Welcome to Wildlife Outdoors with your host, Russell and Jose. If you have a passion for conservation of the outdoors, or you're enjoying a calming hike in the mountains, an exhilarating kayak trip on the river, feeling a fish on the end of your line, cooking on an open flame in a primitive campsite, or stalking big game, just waiting for the perfect shot, you're in the right place. So put on your boots and polarized sunglasses and come along for the ride. Welcome to Wildlife Outdoors. We're back for another episode, and we got a different one here for you today because Jose is not here. So like he said in the last episode, he is going to be out and about. He's actually in South Carolina right now, um, and so we're going to have Marco join us, and this is what, your third or fourth time on the podcast? Well, not with us, but with me. <laughs> I think the fourth, yeah. Fourth. Yep. So uh, we're just going to talk about some you know, fly fishing throughout Central Texas, some trips that we've done, um, some trips that I did here in Arkansas. I just kind of you know, have a, a BS episode for lack of better terms. So, man, how's it going? How's how's everything getting back to normal after getting back from Columbia? Uh, you know, I, I wish I could call it normal. I haven't had a chance to pick up a fly rod since I got back. I won't even lie to you. Damn. You know, I have not fished at all. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, my, it's my own fault, man. You know, I just haven't prioritized it. Right, right. I've, uh, you know, I've taken to other priorities and, you know, I'm not totally against it, but yeah, I need to get back out there. I, uh, took Olive for a walk earlier when I got home from the gym. And, um, you know, we, uh, we came up on a turtle that was like half a mile from the pond. Uh -huh. He was walking on the sidewalk and Olive like sniffed him out. And I go, okay, this is our good deed of the day. We've scooped him up and we walked him out of the way of the pond and put him down and, she just watched them go, and I was like, all right, cool, we're good. I'm sitting out there, and everybody's fishing. You got seven, eight people out there in the pond, and I'm like, all right, I'll come back to it. Right, right. <laughs> so, Damn it, man. I'll get to it. I, I've been out uh, a few times, and uh, I'm not sure if you saw the post on Instagram about that honey hole that I found with all the different species on it. Mm -hmm. Dude, it was sure did. awesome. So it was a single-man float trip that I did, and there's a place up here on the Washita yeah. River um, where you put in, and it's like four or five miles and you take out okay. about half mile from where you put in. It's a whole, it's a horseshoe. It, it's freaking, I've never seen okay. one like it. It's, it's awesome. Um, but there's, I mean, smallmouth galore out there. I, I've, that's mainly what I've gone when I fished it. And that's all I've ever caught is, you know, different types of right. bluegill and, uh, sunfish and, and smallmouth. It's all I've ever caught. And then I went out there right. this time and dude, I was freaking catching everything, catfish and gar and smallmouth and, and all sorts of stuff. It was awesome. But there was striper in one of the holes. There was two of them that I got to freaking wow. follow my fly. And I was like, what the hell? Like I didn't, at first I was like, no, that's not a striper. And then I looked, I was like, that's a damn striper. It came right up to the kayak. And I was like, man. And so I, I found the biggest, cause they were chasing shad like crazy. So I found the biggest shad imitation fly that I had. And I was casting it and, and I got two follows and they followed right up to the kayak, but they would never take. And then they swam off and they were going crazy, dude. Like they were going all the way up onto the mud and splash and chasing these shad. And dude, this honey hole just had freaking everything in it. There was some huge catfish coming up. And like, I literally saw one come up and eat a bluegill right next to the kayak. I was like, what is going wow. on? Like, dude, they were so aggressive. Everything in that hole was aggressive, um, except for the small mouth towards my fly or the, the striper towards my fly, unfortunately. But right. dude, I mean, everything was going nuts. I had a blast, but I'm, I'm hoping that this weekend I'm going to go up north and uh, try to get some small mouth on cicadas. So that's going to be fun. Dude, yeah, man, I'm, I'm kind of jealous of that i'm not i'm just now learning about the whole cicada thing and um i actually talked to a few people about it some somebody in it, these people weren't anglers mm -hmm. uh they were at a gym having a conversation and you know i kind of bumped in and, you know, um they were talking about eating them yeah dude i've heard that they're actually pretty good to eat i've heard they're kind of nutty. that's what i heard yeah that, that's what I heard. And I'm like, man, you know, like I know the fish eat them and like I have buddies that are up in that area right now. And you get into what is it? The 13 year brood? Correct me if I'm wrong. 13 and 23 year or uh, no. So, so they're 13 and 17 year brood. Um, oh, they're 13. Yeah, so the ones year. that we're going to be getting here, are the 13 year brood, it's actually brood 19. Um, but they're a 13 okay. year pattern. Um, and then okay, also gotcha, brood gotcha. 13 is hatching this year, but that's more in the Midwest and they're a 17 year brood. So, um, 
Yeah, gotcha. but but so it's, it's a double brood season uh, year this year, so it's it's going to be brood nineteen and brood thirteen. Brood nineteen is a thirteen That's year, and brood thirteen is a seventeen year. So, um, but yeah, we're we're only going to get brood nineteen here. Brood nineteen is the largest brood throughout the nation, and it basically comes to the northern part, you may, maybe north okay. central of Arkansas. Um, I think brood X, brood ten is the ones that y'all get down in Texas. Y'all had them in twenty nineteen. Okay. Um, it's, gotcha. it, I mean, they look the same, but um, it's just different broods, different years that they come and uh, different regions. So, but yeah, we're gonna, up gotcha, on the northern gotcha. northern part of the state. And, and actually, out on the Washita, we had some, um, mm-hmm. but not nearly as much as, as up, you know, further up north. And so that's why I'm going to go up north right. to where they're hot and heavy. And, um, you know, I've seen quite a bit of people up there catching stuff on top water, catching carp on top water on cicadas and stuff like that. And I'm like, dude, that'd be fun. Yeah, man, that sounds interesting. I got a question about the the whole striper situation. Uh-huh. Um, as you were making these casts and they were following in, did it did did you change the way you stripped your line at any point to you know try to make up to see if they would actually hit it, or were you just on that same stable just strip, 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 strip? So the first time, um, I was kind of I, I wasn't really blind casting, but. I knew I could Mm -hmm. see fish, but I didn't know what they were. And so I was casting out and there was this huge gar. It was probably like five or six foot long. And it had this huge catfish sideways in its mouth and was cruising. And so I was like, I I casted (laughs) at it just because it was there. You know, I was like, hell, maybe I can get it to bite. And um, so I cast it past. I had a clouser on and I cast it past it and I stripped it past it. And that striper was right beneath it. And I figured it was another gar. You know, I thought they were breeding or whatever. And they're kind of deep, you know, in in a lower column of the water. And that gar kind of comes up. And then that striper comes up next to it. And I was like, oh, shit, that's not a gar. Like, that's a freaking striper. And it was it was probably about as long as my arm. And um, right. I was like, no, nah, that wasn't a striper. And then so I cast it out again because they were going past me. And I cast it past and, and it came up. And that's the first time that I actually came up chasing the fly. I was like, oh, crap, that's an actual striper. And I was just kind of, you know, yeah. regular stripping in the clouser. And I was like, well, I'm going to cast again back into that hole. Cast it back. And I tried numerous strips and never got another follow. And I was like, damn, so maybe it's just one that's stuck in this hole is what I was thinking. Well, then I went and I refished that hole a few times because it's probably maybe, I don't know, two, three hundred foot long and maybe 50 foot wide. And there's, I mean, huge boulders underneath the water. It's right after um, a big ripple, um, a spot where I actually almost dumped because it was a little rough on one side. I I chose the wrong path and it was a little rough. Um, But there's a lot of moving water that goes into this big eddy and then it goes to a real shallow ripple after that. And um, so I was like, maybe there's just one striper stuck in here, you know? And then I was casting again where I saw this big catfish at. And I was like, I'm going to cast these catfish. And I started stripping in the same way that I was stripping it in for that gar uh, to try to get that gar to eat. And then I saw another striper. And this was in, one was a little bit bigger and it followed right, right. up. And uh, so I tried, you know, to entice it, try to like, you know, oh crap, like a scared fish. And it just kind of just yeah. followed it. Never once opened it, its mouth, never once tried to hit it. Cause from what I've heard, striper will try to hit their, hit their prey and knock it like unconscious okay. and then swing back around and hit it. But these were just kind of like gotcha. curiously following it. No open mouth, no flared gills, not coming in hot and heavy, just kind of cruising like, Hey, what's this? You know? Um, so I'm not sure. Uh, but those are the only two follows that I got, unfortunately. Um, but no luck on it. So, but I've never caught striper. I've never even targeted them. So I, I really don't even know how to fish for them. Me either. Yeah, me either. That's that's one of the species that I'm telling myself this year. When it gets cooler, mm-hmm. I'm planning on probably probably going to get a guide and go out and just yeah. kind of learn it. Um, have you ever seen the uh, tandem clousers? I have not. No. So we're flowing to Lower Colorado one day. I was with my buddy Eric Porter, um, and we're just, you know, paddling the Diablo, just moving along. And I look over to this tree and I see these two gray and white clousers just hanging there, you know, suspended there. And I'm like, like paddle up to the tree and it was within reach. So I reach over and grab it. And I notice that they're, they were tied in together. And I'm like, well, okay. So I take two and I tie it. Man, I catch fish on it. I start catching fish on it. Really? A bunch of guads are hitting it. Yeah. But the action on it was ridiculous. So it was maybe about eight inches of uh, fluorocarbon leader. Um, I mean, if I had a guess, I'm not sure what pound it was, but that'd be at least 12 pounds. Hmm. But they were tied in together. So when I tied the first one in and I cast it out, it wasn't very heavy either because I was casting out on a seven weight. Cast it out and as I'd strip it, the the action was kind of cool, man. I mean, like they they were working like against each other in a way. It, 
it looked good and fish were hitting it, man. They were excited to hit it. And ever since then, I still have those flies somewhere. They're, they're in a box somewhere, but uh, every time I go to a river, I use them. <laughs> really? I'm like, man, that's, that's smart. Like I would have never thought of that. You know, I just, I mean, nobody talks about tying up tandems like that. And yeah. You find it and you're like, okay, somebody came up with that idea. What's up? And it, it works. It looks really good. I wonder if you would have had the tandem set up like that in that color, that white and gray. Yeah. Um, if they would have smashed it, you know, they would be like, okay, it was a school shad now. You know, you got two shad or yeah. something, you know? That's an idea. It's, for it's sure. crazy. I'll have to, yeah, dude, you should tie that on. Try, try to tie it in tandem rig. Yeah. Uh, but they were both the same size hooks, same lead eyes and everything. Um, try that out. See if that I'll works. I'll try it. So are they tied in together? Like when they tied the fly or is it like two separate clousers and then just tied to the hook? Type of two thing? separate clousers. So like, I don't have them in front of me, but I've got a couple of flies in front of me and you know, there's a redfish crack, right? Yeah. But you've got this one right here. And then they would take at the bend of the hook, mm-hmm. they tied in the fluorocarbon, I see. extended it out and then tied it into the, the eye of the other hook. So they were working together like I that. See. So as you'd strip them, they kind of look the action was awesome, man. I was like, oh, hmm. this guy's a genius. And I wanted to almost like take a picture and then post it and say, who the hell tied this up? Like who, whose idea was this? That yeah. had this. Um, but I'm like, man, you know, anybody can sit there and go, oh, it was me. And just, right. Uh, it, it didn't matter at that point. I was just, I thought it was cool. And I was like, man, you know what? From now on, I don't tie a whole lot of clousers. I don't, and yeah. I should. Um, I'm just not. I've never really been confident with them, I guess. I think that's my downfall with them. I've always been confident. A freshwater fly, um, always go to if I'm not catching fish, woolly bugger, especially yeah. if you're fishing a river system. Yep. Woolly bugger, man. It's always going to do it. You know, it just pushes water. You know, it's light. Um, you know, it's small if, if you tie small ones on, but. Yeah, it's always been my confidence fly. Those are uh, the lunch money minnows, of course. Not yeah, and it's my lunch money minnows. Yeah, I like those lunch monies. Yeah, I was catching mm-hmm. everything that not everything, but most of the things that I caught on that trip was on a pink and white clouser that I tied, and um, even yeah. the gar, dude. Like, so I've ne- I'd never caught a gar up until maybe about a month or so ago, and I caught a small right. gar on a uh, carpet bomb. I was out fishing for carp early okay. in the morning, and um, the sun hadn't quite come above the trees yet. And so I was just kind of right. trying to see any type of movement and I cast it out and there's a bunch of uh, like hydrilla and out here right, right outside my apartment. And um, there was a bare spot and I saw the, the hydrilla moving and splitting. And I was like, Oh, mm-hmm. well there's probably a carp, you know, cruising through there. And so I cast it out and, and I let it drop it just past where I saw the grass moving. And then I just sit for a little bit and then I slowly start stripping it, and, you know, cause I can't see anything. Sun's not up. I can't see through the water. It was right. an overcast morning too. So it was just, you know, the only thing I saw was white reflection of the clouds and then the sun's coming like facing at me. And, um, I just felt something a little tight and I said, well, I'm gonna wait. And then I started seeing the grass move right where my fly was. And so I set the hook strip set and it started swimming, but it didn't take off. I said, what the hell did I catch? And I bring it up and it was a freaking gar. And I hooked it right in the front. And I was like, oh, sweet. Like, well, nice. hell, I caught my first gar and it was on a carpet bottom of all things. Well, then I go out there and I've seen these. I mean, all the gar that were out there were three, three, three and a half foot or longer. And um, right. I cast at it and it comes up and it swipes at it and it didn't get the hook or anything. And so I just kind of kept stripping it the same way. And it swiped at it about three or four times and it swiped at it. And I see it stop and I see its mouth open and close. And I just strip set as hard as I can. And I didn't have any bite wire or nothing on. And it was a uh, a one aught hook, uh, pink and white, very lightly tied clouser. Mm-hmm. And I hooked it directly right in the front of the snout. It went all the way through, hooked it good. I didn't have to worry about it nicking the line or nothing. And I figured I was nice. going to lose it when I first hooked it because I was like, I've, I've never caught you know a gar. I've cast it at them numerous times, and every time I cast them mm-hmm. and they bite, they either you know snip my line or the hook is too big and I can't get a good yeah. penetration because it's it's a thicker wire gauge hook. And uh, this was a pretty thick, it was a saltwater hook, actually. And, and I had originally tied the pink and white from when I was going out of the coast. And so I was like, oh, I'm not going to land this fish. Yeah. And I was on my kayak and it was kind of pulling me around a little bit. And then I was able to get out of my kayak and went on the bank. And I even had time to set my phone up on a little on my little cooler with a water bottle. And I recorded nice. it and, and I landed the fish. And I was like, dude, like everything had to line up perfectly for me to land that fish with that fly. But I mean, it worked out. So, but yeah, everything else that I caught, I caught a catfish on that clouser, caught a bunch of smallmouth on that clouser. I think I even caught a, lo- a couple long eared sunfish on that clouser. Like dude, they were just tearing it up on a freaking one hot clouser. It was pretty cool. I have yet to catch any catfish on the fly rod. Um, I'm lying. I caught a little yellow cat one time. He was small though. He was about 
eight, nine inches, nothing crazy. Mm-hmm. I got, we, we did a, it was Jose, Danny Salinas, myself. A couple years back, we did a Leno float uh-huh. from Junction, or maybe we got out of Junction. Yeah, we, I think we got out in Junction. It was a full day, man. Like, we're on the water 12 hours. Oh, wow. It was hot. Water levels were, eh, you know, so, so, um, but it was, it was a big, like a variety of species caught that day. Uh, we got to this bend <laughs> and Danny was ahead of us and I just see him like walking his kayak back, like knee deep water in a hurry. I've never seen Danny move that fast. <laughs> I was like, I was like, what's going on? He's like, <laughs> he's, he said in Spanish, he's like, vivo that way. <laughs> he's like, snake. And I was like, where? And I look up, dude, this water moccasin. I mean, one of the most beautiful water moccasins I've ever seen. This, like, almost like a red. Really? You know, that's, that's what I remember. It wasn't a copperhead. I, huh. I, I saw it, but it was almost like a reddish, like, tan color. Yeah. And it was just slim. And I was like, I was just trying to get across, man. Don't mess with it. Like, whatever, you know? And, um, in that same bend, I see this blue cat hanging out in there against the current, just sitting there. And I'm like, it's mine. Dump over a fly there. And I think I, had, I was throwing a Rio getter. Mm hmm. And I was like, he's going to eat. And I see, like, as my flies drifting down in that little run, I see that he it catches the, his attention and he's going for it. And then I feel my line get tight. And I'm like, oh, I set the hook. And I'm like, yeah, I got my catfish. Heck yeah, like side casting and everything. It was a guad, a little guad. And now he, like, fish blocked me. Yeah. He got to it quicker than that catfish did. I was like, Damn. <laughs> I was so mad at myself. I was like, come on, man. After that, he took off. So I just never got another chance at it. Gar wise, I've caught two gar on the fly. Mm-hmm. Nothing crazy big. I think the biggest one was maybe like three feet. Mm-hmm. It was a spotted gar, but I mean, in all fairness, it was on an EP fiber bait fish. Yeah. You know, I just like it wrapped around his teeth. And right. uh, that's what I was told at the beginning of things. I was just like, hey, man, this is the only way you're going to stick them there. The hook's not going to sit. So I got him. Didn't get some good picks. I got like from like the gill plate up because I didn't really know how to like angle it and like hold it at the same time on my kayak at the time but uh yeah yeah they're 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 fun to chase and watch them eat i did have one pretty nice size one about three feet as well on the leno up by mason we were wade fishing out there and i stuck one with the white clouser well no it wasn't even a clouser it was like a um it was like a it was almost like a clouser but it was on a white and it was like a white and black striped zonker i see strip um, I, I don't know the name of that fly, but it was in a box and I was like, mm, this ought to work. And I cast it at it and he followed it through and he took it, but then he bit through my leader. Damn. So I was disappointed because I was like, man, that fish is going to, cause it was stuck in his mouth. I was like, he's got it in his mouth. That sucks. And then we go back two weeks later and further up that river, I find that fly. Huh? I see it in the water. I'm like, what is it? I grab it. It's like, dude, this is my fly. And my buddy's with me. I'm like, dude, this is that fly. I stuck him with me. He's like, no way. I was like, dude, I swear to God, look. And I'm like showing it to him with like, stripes on the zonker. He's like, it does look like it. I was like, it's got, I mean, who? Yeah. Anybody could have gone out there and done that. Yeah. Right. But a couple, a couple yards up river for me, like. That's crazy. I don't know. I, I didn't see that gar go down river. I saw him go back up. River, yeah. So who knows? That's I think insane. it's my fly. Yeah, probably is. <laughs> yeah, two weeks later, man. Yeah. That's freaking Yeah, it was, it, was, it was pretty cool. Yeah. That's awesome. Made me feel better because I'm like, well, at least he doesn't have that fly stuff. Right, right. Anymore, you know? Exactly. So. Damn. Yeah, yeah. I have a, I've caught a few catfish. The first catfish I caught, though, was a fight. And uh, I actually have it on. I, it was when I first bought my first GoPro. And I was out there with a two-weight yeah. glass rod. Uh, actually, the, oh, the first my first fly rod. And uh, Jose had given it to me, actually. He taught me how to fish on it and gave it to me. And I was out fishing some retention pond in Richmond, Texas, out by Uh Houston, like Sugar Land, Katy area. And um, I was out there just fishing. And there was a bunch of gar out there. And I could see some bass and stuff. And it was, I mean, just chocolate milk water. And so I could only see when things were, you know, breaching or whatever else coming up for oxygen. And so I was just casting this little olive woolly bugger on a two-weight glass and uh cast it out there and i just start seeing my little fly line move and i i didn't really know i wasn't experienced at the time so i just freaking trout set and it just doubles over yeah. and zzz, starts fighting it. and i fought it for a good while and i bring it in and it was probably like a 12 inch channel cat with a gimp fin <laughs> but dude it was fun to catch on a two-way glass i mean it put up a fight and it was you know one of the first uh decent fights that i'd ever had on a fly rod so it was a blast but i think i have it somewhere on my phone you know from from my first gopro so <laughs> It was, that's it was that's probably fun. how my first redfish went in Port O'Connor. I like chase one in 
to this little channel and uh it ended out it was like a dead end mm-hmm. and i'm paddling in there I, I watch him go in there and i'm like no you're not leaving <laughs> um i casted a olive colored same fly right here i think they're called uh it's matt matt bissett's mud bug i see just like deer bunch of deer hair he shaved it down a bit there you got some craft around the backside olive colored same same fly yeah I didn't realize, I mean, this fly doesn't look very big. It's heavy on bait weight. Uh, I was sitting there and I'm like, I like back casted that on my weight. And I'm like, Oh, that fly is so heavy. I just <laughs> oh, double hold that thing forward, man, and cast it at the end and it sunk. And then I'm sitting there like, strip, 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 boom, just hit it. And my buddy's on the other side of the like, Yeah, I got my first redfish. I'm just yelling. I'm like, that's what I'm talking about. I didn't know how big it was. You know, I could tell gets out into like Mary's little cut. It's running finally get it in it's like <laughs> god man like whatever dude it's a red i took a picture of like my first red you know i think fowler gave me that fly one day he was like this will catch a red sure enough i mean he wasn't lying dude that was caught a red that's um, awesome don't cast those flies too much anymore man like i said they're just too damn heavy for any eight weight i have so I'm like ah, i think i'll stick to the 10 weights on those right right Oh, it's pretty cool. That's freaking sick. So you've got redfish and gar and all sorts of stuff. Are there any fish that are like mm-hmm. your goals, whether it be long-term or short-term goals you want to catch on the fly? I'd like to go and chase some striped bass for sure. When it cool, I'm going to wait till it cools down. Yeah. Um, I, I want to continue to, on my carp journey. Mm-hmm. I know I'm, I've got a handful of carp. Um, so fun to chase man i mean especially when you can see them right sight casting at them is just something else i know of a spot that's got some koi and one of these days i'm gonna stop by there when i'm at work i'm just gonna pull over to the side and go and fish for them and i think if i can catch carp i think i can catch those guys right i just gotta figure out what fly i want to throw at them so definitely i want to continue on this carp journey just go you know a bunch of river different rivers around here i want to go river stomping and um I, i I don't know how I feel about kayak fishing for carp. I don't think I'm, uh, I've got a bad habit of making noise, even when I don't want to. Yeah. Um, I, I'm noisy, man. Like I, I drop my paddle, boom, boom, you know, you just stuff you can't control. Right. Um, definitely want to chase more bass on the fly rod. Now that I got the GNU, I'm waiting for Decker to open up and, uh, they've had that boat ramp closed off for a while now. I, I don't know if it's open again. But uh, I lost a nine pounder there, not on the fly, on conventional years back. Yeah. My neighbor watched me break the boom. You know, it was on me. I, I should have landed that fish. I had it at the kayak. My net wasn't where it was supposed to be, where it normally is. And I learned my lesson and she jumped up and spit that jig out. And I was like, my neighbor's like, was that a bass? I was like, yeah, it was a bass. He's like, did it get that big? Like, yeah, <laughs> dude. I was like, you, you're like, I'm, I'm angry. I'm like, oh, he's like, why are you mad? I'm like, dude. <laughs> Like we're having this conversation, like they get that big, yeah, they get that big, and I just lost it. Right. He's like, well, "Go at it again." She's not gonna eat again, man. She just fought for like five minutes, you know. She's done. Yeah. And then she was like tucked away in some lily pads, man. I mean, these lily pads were like this big, Damn. just huge, just monstrous ones, man. They were just laid out on the backside of the lake. I'd thrown this like a three sixteenth jig, a black one with a uh, big old Kitek ribbon tail. The ribbon on it was like maybe five six inches. But man, the action on that thing, I'd cast it out, like bring it in, just, and, and it just, it was natural movement. And I watched her follow that in once. And then she like, I guess she saw me and turned up, turned back. And I'm like, no, cast it right back past her. And I just like burned it right across her face. Uh-huh. And I just see her like, poof, just flare the gills and open up and sucked it in. I was like, yeah, I knew it. Like set the hook. And he's like pedaling up. He's like, what is that? I was like, I got a bass on, man. And yeah, I've, I lost her, man. Uh, that that should have been a boated fish for sure. Damn. So I definitely want to go chase more largemouth bass, man. Uh, yeah, they're, they're fun, especially on top water, man. You know, they the only thing is, like, there. I have a hard time sight casting at them. I don't, you know, when I do fish for them, if you see them in the river, half the time they already saw you. Exactly. I'm like I said, I'm I'm not good at being quiet. So I definitely say, uh, definitely go back after some largemouth carp. And then, of course, I'm um, going back uh, in January to Columbia. So nice. hopefully I can get a land a big buy out of this year um, to or next year, actually, because it's going to be yeah, 2005. I mean, 2025. Sorry. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, those I think if I can stick some carp, striper, 
some some bigger bass this year along you know with next year's trip i think i'll be complete and i just need to get back out there again and just fish just fish Doesn't get matter. to it bro <laughs> yeah what, what about you man like what, what do you man so my gear my my goals for the year were uh carp um long shot goal was koi um and i landed both those you know uh, I, i've landed numerous carp this year um decent sized ones and i, I yeah, landed yeah. a koi um so those were my main goals of course i had the goal for the bonefish in the bahamas which did not happen right um and uh stripers definitely won and, and there's there's a lot of areas near me that have striper in them so um right. i'm hoping this winter um or later this year whenever it starts cooling down i'll be able to yep. but dude lately i've been on a kick about like native fish and endemic right. fish and so when i went down to texas last time and we went and fished brushy mm -hmm. um i didn't right. I, I landed a couple quads but i didn't get on any rios right. and so i want to make it down to texas and get get on some rios again um i just i don't know what it is about fish that are where they've always been and the only place that they are mm -hmm. it's just exciting to me even if they're small you know reels i mean i've caught some I, right. the first reel i caught was you know dinner place i was freaking big mm -hmm. for a reel yeah. um but there's just something exciting about it like here so in arkansas we have uh, a few subspecies of smallmouth bass one of them is a neosho bass it's in like the illinois river mm -hmm. watershed area um so i'm hoping right. this weekend that's what i'm going to be catching um i'm hoping okay. you know it, they they interbreed with northern smallmouth so you can't really tell um, but I'm hoping right. that I can get on some, some Neosha smallmouth. They're probably, they're typically in smaller water. So if I see any feeder creeks coming off the river or anything like that, um, I'm actually going to be fishing a Creek one of the days. So I'm hoping that, you know, I'll get on some smallmouth nice. with it. Um, also there's the Washita smallmouth bass, which is, you know, down in the Washita range, uh, which is closer to where I'm at. And that's what I was catching most likely, right. um, with some Washita's or some, uh, hybrids with, with Northerns, uh, was what I was catching a couple of weeks ago. Um, there's the Ozark bass, which is very similar to a rock bass. Um, but it's endemic to the Ozarks. And so I want to get on some of those. I've never caught a rock bass or an Ozark bass. So, so how, how do you, I guess I could also look it up, but I, I'll ask you first, mm -hmm. how do you know like the subspecies? Like, is, is there like a distinct marking on them that, that gives it away? Kind of like the guadi, you know, the you, patch, you get on uh, hybrids yeah. too. They get that little patch on their tongue yep. or that little, uh, the, the little diamond plating across the belly area. Mm -hmm. But then again, you get hybrids that have the similar markings. And then depending on what river they are, you'll get this argument all day from everybody to the point to where I'm just like, dude, whatever. It's a guad. If it's the lower Colorado, if it's another river, I think the Leno has nothing but guad. Like th those are pure strength guad as well. And I could be wrong. And I think in New Braunfels as well, but there's spots on the San Marcos where you get hybrids and, yeah. and so on. So, but how, how do you, how do you tell? So with the Neosho and the Washita, if I'm not mistaken, I think the only way that you can tell is that there's either five or six spines on the dorsal. Um, okay. and that's really it. There's no other colorings. That's really different. Um, there's no face markings. There's no tongue patches. There's nothing like that. The main like okay. physical telltale sign, if I'm not mistaken, is the, the amount of spines on the dorsal. Um, gotcha. But I think they've also found out that there are some fluctuations within the northern as well. I'm not 100% on that. Um, there's still papers and research that are being done. Um, so wow. right now they're all still smallmouth bass. And I think eventually they're going to try to push to have them set as their own separate species like like the guad was. Um, but right. I, I don't know too much on that. I do know that typically the Washita and the Neosho, well, not typically, but the Washita and the Neosho bass, uh, smallmouth bass will be smaller. They don't get as big as the northern, which is why they started stocking okay. northerns in the first place. Um, but they're also, you know, creek specialists. So they're going to be in smaller waters, moving waters, um, not going to be out in big waters in the river. Like you'll find, you know, smallmouth in, in bigger rivers. Those are typically going to be the northern strains. So where you find them is going to be more of a telltale whether you catch them or not. But I don't think you can really tell gotcha. uh, physically, you know, without genetics and stuff like that. But um, I need to do more research on it for sure. But just knowing that I'm catching something that's the only place that you can find it is awesome. But also just something, even if you can find them other places, you know, due to stalking or anything like that, it's just fun to catch something native. Like I want to go into the Northeast and catch some brook trout, some native brook trout. I feel like that'd be fun. Yeah. Um, I, I don't know. It's just, it's, that's been kind of my thing lately. 
um you know of course there's the destination fish that i always want to catch you know i want to catch a rooster fish and tarpon and bonefish oh, and, yeah. and stuff like that like that's just stuff that you know i don't know if that's going to happen anytime soon so those are long-term goals but just for now like man i'm getting a kick out of native species yeah no there you gotta you gotta, always got to respect them um i mean they're there for a reason yeah. um as far as rios go i've got a I've got a little area right here down the street from the house man that actually has some that's where i caught my first one really and then like yeah the next cast over i doubled up on it and i was like i caught one double the size and i was that's the biggest one to date and i was any you know like you see living waters are constantly posting pictures of like these really nice reels just barely sticking out of the water you know they their photography is awesome you know yeah but I don't have that photography skill and I don't carry a camera with me. I use my phone mm-hmm. uh, for the longest time. And I've had the same phone. I just recently upgraded to the new 15 uh, Pro Max. So now these pictures I'm taking, they're they're a lot cooler. So I'm, I'm really curious to like what kind of fish picks I'm going to take here soon. Yeah. Because uh, I was going to get this phone before I went on the trip and something just told me like, hey, man, you don't know what's going to happen out there. Like you could lose this phone and it's, you know, they're expensive as it is. So. Ended up sticking with my old, uh, they got an old XR, man. So I was like five or six phones behind. Yeah. I felt bad. I was, uh, <laughs> when I was fishing with Richard, he took some really cool pics of my peacock bass when he caught his fish. I couldn't take his cool pics <laughs> because I only had that one camera versus where him having three on the back. I'm just like, we got back to camp and I'm like, dude, I'm sorry. Right. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm poor, man. I have an XR, <laughs> dude. And he's like, he's like, oh, don't worry about it, man. Don't worry about it. You know, I was just like, I'm sorry, dude. I just, I'll upgrade when I get back. I promise in the next one we'll take some cool pics. But, <laughs> um, yeah, man, uh, the, the Rio that, that I caught, the good size one, didn't get any measurements or anything, but man, she had a forehead on her. Mm-hmm. And I think what made it more exciting to me was to see how they attack the fly. Yeah. Dude, they are aggressive little buggers, man. Like, I mean, I've seen, like, when you get to this spot, there's like this little dam fall or whatever. And, there's a there's always a little puddle of water there and they're hanging out there these small ones you know they're just running around the whole time they're just you know there's like chaos in that pond and then you look over on the other side of the dam and you float up you go up to the dam you get to the spend out and we were i think my buddy had a john boat like a, he had just got this 12 foot john boat and he put a little mink coat on it he's like hey man i want to take it out just you know make sure i feel comfortable there I'm like, all right cool let's go man let's go right here so we go and put it in and we get out there and uh I told him, I was like, man, just like, he had just picked up the fly rod. So I'm like, Hey man, like when you cast, we're working on his casting. And, uh, it, like I see this almost falling over tree. There's all these branches coming down. There was this one spot that had sunlight hitting it. And I'm like, I had tied, um, a bunch of, uh, bluegill bullies, uh-huh. simple fly, you know, it's just a little scud hook, some, uh, some, some wire on the, on the shank and, uh, chenille and I think two rubber links. That is it. Nice. You know, and, and it's small. So like, I, I make this cast. I was casting a five weight and I mean, it's just beautiful cast and like lands right there in that spot of sunny as this fly sinking. I see this sunny just run up to it and you can tell he's going to eat it. And this reel just comes in like out of the dark and spooks it off and he takes off and it takes. I'm like, Oh man, like I look at him, but did you see that? He's like, no. I was like, Oh, cool. Like, Oh, it's a real, like I take him out and I'm like, oh, that's a cool little fish, you know, I let it go. And, and I cast right back into that spot. And then there's a snake coming up. It was a water <laughs> snake. It wasn't a water moccasin. It's like running around, around the edge of there. And I make that second cast. Same thing. That fly starts sinking and she comes out of nowhere. I mean, just big old forehead. The picture I took was in, you know, my hands like that. But if you're like to zoom in on that pick and see like my hands are put together, it's a pretty good size reel, man. It just, I'm bad about getting measurements. To me, I could sit there and give you an explanation on how big the fish was, the width and all that. But then I think it takes away from like the, the love that, that I had for that moment, right. you know, cause it's like, then it becomes a clout thing, you know, exactly. and I just, when I first started fly fishing, I thought you needed that. And now I'm just at the point where I don't care, dude. Like I'm like, man, I'm just going to get out there. I don't care if it's a small fish. I don't care if it's, I mean, I, of course everyone wants to catch a big fish, right? Yeah. But, to me, to this point, it's like, as long as I can go out and like, just get away and disconnect from life, the everyday, you know, life. Um, I think that's enough for me now. And I think now I'm starting to get into like, okay, this is it. Like, 
I'm going to start getting serious about things and I'm going to start like doing my research hardcore and like actually get out there and, and go into like target that species that I want. Um, I feel it coming. It took a while, but I feel it coming. Um, so yeah, if you ever come down again, dude, uh, if you want to go chase some Rios, we can go. It's not far from here. It's like three minutes from my house. Dude, so. I'm down. Yeah. So. I freaking love catching Rios. The first Rio I caught was on brushy and, uh, me and Jose yep. were out there wade fishing and I was using the two weight glass and mm -hmm. i saw i didn't i didn't really know what a reel was at the time this was back in like 2019 i think and uh um, yeah. and so i just saw what i thought was bluegill and they were bedded up and one of them kept chasing off fish and i had this tiny i don't even know what it was like a like a red zebra midge or something it, it was tiny okay. and i just cast it out and it hammered it and it started taking off and it was actually peeling drag on that two weight and i was like dude what is this thing and, and i pulled it i was like dude look at this big bluegill and jose's like dude, that's a Rio. It's like, dude, that's a big Rio. And I was like, what? And I actually got a picture of it here. And so I don't know if you could really oh, see yeah. it, but I mean, that's my yeah, hand. No, it's it's that. bigger than my hand. Yeah. It was, it was a good size Rio and it was all spot like spotted up, uh, with like injuries and stuff. So it had been through some stuff, but yeah, dude, it yeah, was uh, scrappy. Yeah. It was, it was an awesome experience for my first Rio for sure. Um, but ever since then, once I learned what they were, I was like, dude, it's so awesome. And so we went back to brushy close to that same area and I found a little hole and Jose kept moving on because, you know, Jose's the typical, you know, if I'm not finding fish that are biting, I'm going to find them that are. And me, I'm hard headed. Yeah. I'm like, I want to, I see them. I want to catch them. And yep. I just changed flies, changed flies, changed flies in this one little hole. And dude, I pulled nine reels out of one hole, uh, just changing wow. flies. And uh, Jose wasn't really catching much. He caught a few uh, long ears and red breast. And I went up and talked to him and mm -hmm. I was like, dude, I caught like nine of them. And he's like, yeah, you're full of shit. <laughs> and I started showing him all the pictures. I was like, dude, I caught all these in that one little hole. I and mean, they were all small. <laughs> um, but I caught a bunch of reels that day. And ever since then, it's like, if I'm in an area that has reels, like that's what I want to catch. But I've only ever caught them on brushy. I've never caught them in any other bottle of yeah. body of water. Um, I do want to go to San Antonio and catch them because I heard there's some hogs in San Antonio. Yeah, there is. Uh, my buddy Danny down there, um, he'll go into like the uh, downtown area mm -hmm. and he'll catch him. He'll catch him, send me pics. And it's like, man, I'm just never in that area to stop by after work. Right. And on top of that, with this heat coming in, that's the last place I want to be hanging out. Exactly. And, you know, just like wide open in the sun. And, yeah. you know, you get homeless guys hanging around there too. And it's just like, it's, it's unnecessary trouble. Yeah. Of course, you know, I'm just like, whatever. I, I just don't want to get into it. And then you're far from home. So it's like, man, I just want to go home, dude. I, I know I'm going to run into traffic. So it's like, exactly. that's always the, the play in my head. But I need to be better about just, you know, going out and doing it. When I first started working for Life Fitness, since I drive around a lot, I was doing a lot of work in San Antonio. And I always kept the fly rod in my van. Mm -hmm. And I would stop in areas to fish. And I'd see fish, but they just, they'd never attack the fly. I don't I don't know why. It was It was weird. Um, maybe my presentation wasn't there. Maybe they could see me, but I mean, they, they, they have fish down there. They definitely have some fish down there. I've never fished any of the river systems though. Um, like Medina, I've heard Medina has some good sized fish. Never really been there. Um, I just, I don't know, man, like I'm 35 now and I feel like every day is just passing by too damn quick. So it's like, yeah. I'll go this weekend. Then the weekend comes. And I was like, Oh, I got to do house duties. I got to do this. I got to do that. Like I said, I got to prioritize now. And it's like, I don't know what happened, dude. I used to have all this time when I was in my twenties and it's kind of gone now. It's like, damn, you got to start concentrating on what you really want now. Exactly. Really want to fish. Yeah. I yeah, mean, you need <laughs> so, to prioritize it. I mean, hell, dude, I do, it's man. hard for me. I you do. know, we, we both work a lot. Um, and then of course I got yeah. my kiddos and stuff like that. So it's, yeah. uh, it's tough to, to find the time to do it, but if you want to do it, man, you got to do it. And, and, you know, yeah. luckily you're, uh, you know, at a, at a position to where you might be able to go on a lunch break or something like that at work. I need to get oh, yeah. better about that. So I, 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 need, I think I'm actually going to take my six weight because there's uh, the little red river runs through the town that I've been working in lately up in Cer Cersei, Arkansas. And mm -hmm. there's also next to the VFW, there's a pond out there and there's all sorts of structure in it. And so I'm pretty sure there's large mouth out there also. And, um, I, I've driven by a few times. And I'm like, man, I need to bring my fly rod and on a lunch break, come out here and fish for a little bit. But um, I haven't done it yet. But I think I'm going to throw maybe my five or six weight in the truck for next week when I'm up there and, and try to do some fishing on a lunch break or something because it looks fishy. So there's a spot in Fredericksburg. It's like way tucked away off, like right outside the city. It's uh, uh it's more retired folk there. It's called Boot Ranch. Mm -hmm. They have a little gym there, you know. Uh, almost like a community center type deal and um they've got a golf course on site so you cross this like 
I mean, it's literally a wooden bridge and there's ponds on both sides. And I always cruise by there, man. And I look over real quick and just kind of like peep it out. And there was one day I was there and I mean, I kid you not, man, there's a, it, it, it was a silhouette, but you could tell it was a bass. Uh-huh. Hey, it was a, ho- it was a hog, dude. And I'm just like, what the <laughs> hell? Like I drive over. And I talked to my point of contact there. Her name's Jordan. She's no longer with him. She moved back to Pensacola. But, uh, I was like, Hey, Jordan, like, do you think they'd give me hell? And like, I don't know. I just parked outside and started fishing. And she's like, I don't think so. Like I can ask. Never brought it back up. So I was just like, I kind of, I left it there. I'm like, man, the last thing I want to do is get my company in trouble right. you know, for being out there fishing and stuff. So it's like, well, it's not a yes. So it's like, I just take it as a no. And I never asked again. I'm not going to bug people about it, man. I was just like, it was just, you know, it was worth the shot to ask, you know, and yeah, I had some places be like, yeah, man, you can go back there and fish or whatever. And it's like, all right, cool. But you finish with work and it's like three 30. I'm like, I gotta go home. Right. I don't have time now. And so it's like, ah, whatever, you know, what, what are you going to do? You know, it's not really your property and you don't want to be rude. Yep. So, and then yeah. also, you know, if you're in a company vehicle or company uniform, last thing you need is somebody to take a picture and throw it online. Look what he's doing while he's at work, you know? Well, the good thing is my van's on Mark. So oh, nice. Nobody knows. Yeah. Nobody knows who I work for, man. I won't say what I've done before, but <laughs> <laughs> some, some, some people get to see the bad side of me. Well. <laughs> <laughs> Just like covered my shirt. Like, <laughs> right. <laughs> Damn it, man. Uh, well, I guess we're kind of coming up on time. So, uh, nope. man, I appreciate you hopping on and filling in for us. Yeah, man. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, yeah. Anytime. We we need to chit chat more off the podcast for sure. And, and, yeah. and I need to make yeah. another trip down there. And we need to we need to go drink some beer and do some fishing. Dude, let's do it, man. You know, you're always welcome here. We've got spare bedrooms, dude. Uh, tell Jose the same thing. I'm like, you come in town, dude. You don't want to go. We've got spare bedrooms, dude. There's plenty of room, dude. Like, whatever let's just finish you know but yeah definitely if you come down again man let me know give me a heads up we'll set something up you know if we got to make a coast run we can make a coast run if you want to fish around here we can do that again i haven't fished the lower colorado since it's been almost two years dude i haven't fished the low, so, lower colorado since last time we went it was it was me you jose danny mm-hmm. and i don't remember who else was with us but my my buddy eric yeah yeah. So we uh, need to yeah, no, we need to no. run that back, it's, dude. I need to make another trip down to the coast because I haven't seen Fowler's new place yet either. So I need to go. Oh, dude, yeah, it's so much more. Have you checked the old? Did you see the old? Yeah, one? yeah, I've been there a few times. Okay, so same building upstairs, right? Same building upstairs. Yeah, yeah dude, so much space. I mean, it's it's way way bigger. I mean, it that's where he belongs. Yeah, it's set up. I mean, you walk in, there's. Fish mounts everywhere, man. I mean, all different species too. He's even got like skin mounts still sitting on the desk right now from hanging those up. Um, they got this huge fly tying table. He's doing fly tying nights every, I think third or fourth, uh, Friday of the, of the month. Mm-hmm. So he's, you know, been pretty consistent with those and you get somebody to go down and demo out, you know, flies depending on who it is. Sometimes they do like a first freestyle. But uh, it's growing, man. You know, everybody's starting to know about it. They're getting down there. They're buying stuff. He's been staying pretty busy. So it, it's been good, man. It's it's good to see something like that grow. I mean, there's always fly shops, right? But, like, mm-hmm. I don't think I've ever felt – and not, I'm not saying this is just because I know Chris, but, like, I don't think I've ever felt more comfortable at any other fly shop besides, you know, the fly trap. You right. go in there. There's couches. There's seats. You take a seat, you talk, you BS, tell fish stories, tell lies, whatever you want to do, you know, like <laughs> you can do it all, man. You, know, you, you just like random people walk in off the water, people that you know walk in, you run into other folks that you know there. And sometimes there's people there that you didn't even know were going to be there. It's just, you know, you, you just never know there. And, um, you know, it's, it's always welcoming. It's always welcoming. It's good folks down there, man. Yeah. Good folks. I love it. I, mean, so, I haven't been to the new one, but I used to love going to the old one. So. No, you'll love it. If you like the old one, man, you'll love the new one. The new one's got a lot of character, a lot of character, man. Awesome. Well, a maybe lot. we can make a trip down yeah. there and then also need to go down and go fishing with uh with our buddy Aaron. He's been telling me for a while I need to go down there and fish. So maybe I just need to take a whole damn week off work and say, screw it. I'm going to go all over I, Texas. <laughs> I agree. I agree, man. But I also need to come up and see you up there too, man, and you know, bring the kayak and do a float with you because – uh Last time I went up there, I didn't get to fish. You know, yep. I took my fly rods and I didn't fish at all. That's that's my fault. But um, if you get some time, let me know, man. I'll make the drive. We'll come up. You know, camp trip, whatever you want to do, dude. We can get you on some smallies and some pickerel. I've not been on smallies nor pickerel on the fly rod. I've caught smallies on conventional gear mm-hmm. here local because uh, there's a spot that has a few, I guess. Yeah. 
Um, but that's it. You know, but yeah, I see bronze back pictures all the time and I'm like, dude, I don't want that on the fly. They look aggressive <laughs> and they look like little footballs and stuff, you know, they're cool looking. Yeah. I like them. They're awesome. They're so, coloring. Yeah, really man. Cool. They, they fight harder than a large mouth. So yeah, man, we need to make it happen. Yeah. Sure. Okay. I'm in, man. I'm set. Oh yeah. Well, we'll plan it cool. out. But, and for you, those of y'all that made it to the end, we appreciate y'all for listening. We'll catch y'all next time. This has been Wildlife Outdoors. Thanks for listening. Follow us on Facebook at Wildlife Outdoors and on Instagram at wild.life.outdoors. Let's go live life on the wild side.